What is going on guys and welcome back to another video here. Doing some chores around the house today. We got uh, the wife's third gen here. I pulled her intake out. My intentions are just to buy a new one. And I thought I would test out pressure washing the filter and letting it dry in the sun just to see if it can get clean and temporarily reusable in the meantime. I'm gonna buy a new one, but in the meantime, it's so bad. I'm just thinking maybe I can pressure wash it you know, let it sit in the sun for a few hours and drip dry, air dry, because it is blazing hot again today. At least for here, I know you guys in the comments be like, oh, I'm from Texas, 95 ain't nothing. I get it, I get it. There's other places of the world that are much warmer, but for around here, it's hot. Getting ready to hop on the Coyote tractor. We're gonna be doing some mowing in the pasture. Pasture's getting a little bit overgrown. It's about knee high, most of it. Having a family, family member I have hired to do my mowing which is Ty, it's actually Ty's brother, younger brother. Got that going. We moved the horse trailer. Reagan, I think she's, I think she's got a buyer lined up for that or a couple that are coming to look at it today. That horse trailer, just a lot bigger than she was planning on. Like she bought it thinking like, this is gonna be amazing. And then once we get it back and hook it up to a truck and pulling it, she's like, this thing is just so big. She, she wants something a, like a size smaller, like 10 feet smaller, actually. it's. 10 feet shorter actually, that thing's like 32 feet long, so it's, it's just it's just a lot, maybe 35, I'm not sure exactly. So we're gonna hop on the tractor, we're gonna get to mowing down the pasture. Enjoy the video. going to be doing a little bit of a property tour I guess and uh, just give you guys a little bit of a little bit of a inside scoop of our area here let's kind of go through some of those things so first thing you're going to notice here is the Honda CRV we got the car brand new and we basically got this thing as a runner for longer trips with the kids or just close quarters driving back and forth because it gets incredibly good fuel mileage and yes could we just drive a big brand new diesel course we could however certain economics just I can't overlook them and it's just one of those things where yes we have we have some big diesel stuff for just pleasure driving as well or when we need truck truck stuff but for most of the time in my opinion this is basically to do everything that that truck does not have to do as the wife's truck and the wife's daily to just put miles on when she's running doing basic everyday things like groceries, running air and stuff like that with the kids. It's just a whole lot more economical than that thing. For those of you that have been watching frequently recent, um, this is the wife's 2007 5.9 Cummins and uh, she sold her previous truck to me and then I used it for the business to do a giveaway to replace her truck with this one here, which is an 0759, 200,000 miles on it. Everything on the truck works amazing. It's got some bumps and bruises. Like it's got a couple of scratches in the bumper, a little ding here and there. But for the most part, truck has zero rust. It's super clean. If you guys haven't seen around this thing, I can show you guys around. We just got done oiling the whole thing underneath. Um, oiled the leaf packs, the whole frame, the ins filled the inside of the frame with oil, filled all the bed rails under the bed with oil, cab mounts, corners, all that stuff. Filled everything with oil on the truck as a way of preservation for this thing, anticipating the long-term uh, value of the truck, keeping it from rusting as messy as undercoating is, is worth doing when you live in a place where vehicles tend to rot out if you drive them year round. And yes, up front we do have just under two acres of pasture. That is for the wife's pasture pets here. And then there's her little horse barn right there. And that is basically just two stall with an additional third stall that is just used for hay storage and feed storage. And that is her little setup up front. And then moving back to the barn, we got the wife's horse trailer with two tack rooms, living quarters, all that stuff. It's actually got kitchen, bathroom, everything. Um, she's actually selling this. I think I mentioned that earlier in the video. We got the 14 foot lawn care trailer from back when I had the lawn care business. Kept it around because it is very useful. We got the Nasty Reds plow, which I've got a lot of comments and questions about this. A lot of people asking about the plow. Are we giving it away with Nasty Red? Uh, and the answer would be, that is not the plan. So Nasty Red originally was given away with a plow back in the day. 
and the truck is being advertised without the plow. There's nowhere in the rules that say it comes with the plow. We haven't made any posts or emails or we haven't had no videos, no photos with the plow for this giveaway. We're not advertising or leading anybody to believe that it's coming with a plow for this go around because we may possibly be keeping it just in case we want to put it on the wife's truck just for not to use it as a plow truck. But like if we need to push snow off of like our own driveway or the neighbors, perhaps, at least we have that as an option. Or if the winner of the truck really wants to plow for some reason, they, they just really like they got to have it uh, to go with it we can make it an option to where you can either substitute, you know, some of the cash that would come with the truck for the plow, or you can just purchase the plow with it. But, you know, that's not really something we care to discuss right now because, you know, there's a lot of people that might win this truck that don't even want the plow. I mean, half the guys that I see comments say they're gonna take the plow mounts off immediately. Anyways, they don't want anything to do with the plow with the truck. So it's not being advertised to go with the truck and we're not planning on the plow going with the truck the second time around just because, well, first off, it's the middle of summer, so it's kind of kind of be weird to advertise it with the plow versus last time we gave away Nasty Red, it was the middle of January. So it made a little bit more sense to kind of advertise it as that, but this go round, no, the plow is not gonna be included with Nasty Red. We do have an oil spill because we did, uh, well, if you saw the previous video, oil filter, oil fuel filter, all that stuff on the wife's truck, so it kind of made a huge mess everywhere. We got the Coyote CS2210. If you guys saw the videos of this thing way back when I picked it up earlier this spring, it's a beast of a little tractor. It's a, got 20.5 hours on it now. I bought it brand new. I uh, got a steal of a deal on this thing because it was a 2021 model and the 2023s were already starting to show up. And so they were like, okay, we need to dump this thing quick because you can't sell a tractor at full retail price. If it's two years old, technically, even though it's brand new and all the new new stuff is already showing up. So it was one of those deals where they were like, dude, if we can get you to buy a 21 instead of a 23, we'll shave off like X amount of thousands of dollars. And it was like way less. And so I was like, uh, yeah, I'll take the several thousand dollar discount to buy the 2021 because the amount of improvements were like nothing. This thing's already got like the dual piston loader and all that stuff. So it already had all the same options that the other ones had anyways at the time for the model that I was getting. And so for me, it didn't make any sense to just spend thousands extra to get that because he said the warranty wouldn't change anyway. It would start the day that we signed on the tractor, releasing it from the dealership, and it would not start back when it was actually delivered to the dealership or anything weird like that. It was just starting the day that I bought it. And so I was like, well, if I get all the same warranty and all the same benefits and just save tons of money, why not? Been great, a lot of mowing, a lot of tilling already. I say a lot, 20 hours on it. We've already dug a small water hole pond for the deer back by the woods. Uh, it's been great. Nasty Red 2.0, guys. It is dusty in this barn. And when you leave the door open all night, it gets even dustier, blows a bunch of dirt in here. The thing needs washed again. It's, it's such a battle. Every time you park a truck in here, outside, whatever, especially in the spring, there's pollen in the air. Everything's getting so nasty so fast. All that being said, you can enter to win this truck right now at lnpgear.com. Just check this thing out, guys. It's beautiful, completely redone, and it is going to one of you who see this and place an order on the website or on the app. And right here is the 1997 5.912 Bob Cummins Dually five-speed manual that also comes with $5,000 in cash. The giveaway for this truck is, however, over, and we are hopefully just a couple of days out from having a winner for this thing. To give one of you guys a phone call to come and pick this thing up, super excited about that, so stay tuned. Keep your notifications on. Check our Instagram page right here. Stay up to date because somebody any day now is going to be getting a phone call saying that they won this thing. And that somebody could be you. This right here is my late grandfather's 2001 Dodge Ram 1500 that I bought him back in 2000, I think early 2018, after I did my first ever truck giveaway. And so this truck means a lot to me for a few different reasons. And you guys are probably wondering, why does the wife have a way cooler truck? You know what? The wife's five nine third gen it's not that much cooler okay yeah it's diesel it's got you know bigger wheels and tires on it i mean it's got a lot more torque it's got a lot more power it's got more room in it and, you know don't okay okay i hear i see the comments okay this truck means the world to me for a few different reasons a i bought this truck for my grandfather after the first giveaway i ever did the first big purchase that i went and made after my first giveaway and my first time turning a profit running my business and my channel, I went and bought him a truck. And that had been on my mind to do, even actually before I could even drive myself and had my own vehicle, 
I just wanted so bad to be able to afford to buy him a truck because the one that he had at the time was just running into all kinds of issues. Transmission failure, none of the gauges in the thing worked. It was super rusty, falling apart half the time. And it was always like, get in and like cross your fingers. And I hope it starts. And you know, it'd click and grind a couple of times and it'd fire up. So my thing was like, I want to get him a truck that runs good. It's reliable. And at the time this was what I could afford to get him. And he was, he was absolutely speechless. I still remember him like crying in the dealership and say, you know, nobody's ever done anything like that for him and how important that was to him and all that stuff. And it was, it was amazing. And it was super, super special to him and very special to me to be able to do that for him at the time. This truck has no plans on leaving my hands at any time in the near future. And as far as I can see in the future, I'm planning on just keeping this thing here where it sits and driving it time to time in nice weather, a little bit of deer season, cause that's the time I'm like in the truck super early in the mornings the most just driving on the road and having that peace and quiet and just sitting and reminiscing of this thing to me ah it's amazing and i love it and at some point do you fully custom leather interior with you know some of the quotes that he would always say stitched in like the shoulder area on the passenger seat the driver's seat and the back seat um pick like his like four most common quotes four or five and embroider those into the leather interior on the truck that is what I'm gonna be doing with this for the next things that I do to this truck. But that's something that currently is not in the works, but that is something that in the very near future I would like to pursue. And right here we have the Yamaha Moto 4. This beautiful blue beast here is actually like indestructible. It's pretty ridiculous. I've used this more as a tractor than I've used that thing as a tractor so far. I mean, I have had this thing pulling crazy heavy logs, skidding them out when I was cutting firewood. I mean, wood piled up three foot high on the back, three foot high on the front, just piled and strapped on crossing the creek, going up steep grades. And this thing just doesn't stop. Um, it does have the electric start that doesn't work. So I just pull start this sucker and, and, it, and it's good to go. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And believe it or not, this thing's really good on fuel um, for probably the, I don't even know how many hours I put on this thing so far since I've had it. I really can't even put a guess on it because I really don't know how many miles or hours, I guess I would say I put on this thing so far. I've literally, since I got this thing in like February, it is now either the last, I think it's May 31st today. I have put like two tanks of fuel in this thing in all the times that I've been using it. And I've I've really worked this. And most of the time I've used it, it's been like under heavy load, like really revved up working. Um, and it's it's done me nothing but good. And for those of you wondering about the shop space, how big is the shop space? How much can I fit in here? Um, I know it's not the fanciest shop. I know some of you guys watch some of these other YouTubers and you look at their shop tours and they're like, oh my gosh, like it's insane. That's a half a million dollar shop build. Like, holy smokes. And as much as I would love to have a shop like that, uh, you know what? It's not always necessary. And for what I do, for the most part, I usually just swap wheels and tires in here, work on stuff under the hood, work on front ends, uh, swap bumpers, swap mirrors, swap headlights, taillights. You know, if I had to pull a bed off a truck, I can do that. You know, sand down frames, repaint them, full services, stuff like that. This shop does that great. And I'll be honest with you, I can fit four, maybe even five trucks in here if I park it, if I park stuff in here correctly. I think the last time I had this thing jam packed, I had four trucks plus the tractor, plus the zero turn, plus the four wheeler. Everything was indoors and it was, it was packed tight, but everything fit. And it's a 30 by 40. And that's, not including the fact that this whole corner space is supposed to be an office space that's currently just wasted space um, that we can't use in the shop right now. And here is our Champion 25 ton log splitter I got with like, I don't even know. The guy said he had like two hours of use on it. He had bought it brand new. And then he had it for sale for like a hundred bucks less than new price. And I price gouged him with an offer like crazy and offered him like 50% of what he was asking. And he was like, no. And then the next day he messaged me and said, you know what? Screw it. I need the thing on today. And here we are. So, uh, I got this thing for a steal of a deal. I haven't had a single issue with it. I can just come out here, pull the thing and it fires up immediately, split all this wood with it, 
split all that wood with it right there just this past season and some and then we've already been burning some of it for like campfires and stuff like that like for smoking meat and stuff along the lines of that it's been an awesome splitter the whole lean-to being closed in on this half we actually added this on as well as the concrete it was none of this concrete or anything in this barn at all was here we added all this stuff it's actually made this space so much more usable because i'm actually able to store all of the shelving and all of these tools and parts and accessories in there keep it out of the weather but keep it out of the shop space which is how i'm able to fit those vehicles and equipment in there that tight and then we've got the land pride tiller it's a reverse time tiller it's a four foot for the coyote cs2210 thing works amazing now this doesn't look too great right now i understand but this is my late grandfather's alice chalmers and when i parked it here it ran just fine the problem i was running into was the freaking tire is not holding air for who knows what reason could have been punctured just completely dry rotted um could be like a leak around the valve stem or the rim has a hole rusted through i don't really know exactly what the issue is with that but the thing always gets started if i ever need to start it i can simply put a hand crank on it give it a little shot of ether or something and the thing will just fire although it does have its quirks and it leaks fluid like crazy and sometimes it's a pain to start it does always start up and so my goal with this thing probably sooner than later now that i have another tractor to use for mowing and tilling and stuff like that and i don't really need to use this bush hog around here at the moment my goal is to get this thing towed off and get completely restored that's what i'm looking for and i'm not in a rush to like it needs to be done right away and like it needs to be a quick turnaround but how many of you in the comment section below i'm in the ashland county ohio area if there's anybody out there who is good at restoring these tractors or tractors just like them or if you know your ins and outs of the alice chalmers wd-45 tractors i'm actually wanting to get this thing like completely redone like make sure the engine's in top running condition all the seals redone on a lot of the stuff to keep it from leaking so much fluid new paint i'm wanting to get this thing restored as nice as i can without having to go extremely crazy on the funding of it just because i know like it's one of those things where it might cost me you know three times what the tractor's worth even when it's restored to get it done but for me personally i'd like to see that all redone that way i can park this indoor somewhere keep it nice and have this thing in perfectly good running and driving condition without having to worry about cranking it over from the front and without having to worry about it you know having the rust and all the leaks and all the stuff to where it's kind of a pain in the butt to even use it sometimes um because you always have to watch fluids and all kinds of stuff to keep the thing in good shape so if I could have anybody reach out, um, I would be glad to talk about getting this thing done because I don't have a lot of connections locally yet and I would love to get this done. And it'd be even cooler yet if one of you guys who watched the videos for all these years that knew how to do this stuff could reach out and I would gladly pay somebody, you know, that's a fan or a follower over somebody else gladly. So, um, Anyways, let me know in the comment section below. We do have trails mowed all throughout back here. And I'm gonna get on the tractor though, cause it's a, it's a decent ways back there. Cause our property is more narrow, but it's a really long piece. So I'm gonna hop on the tractor, mow this trail. And when we get back there, show you around some of my favorite spots. actually one of my favorite parts of the property it's um it's not the prettiest spot right now but it's a perfect food plot location and it's a perfect staging area and it's right up against beautiful perfect bedding 
and those are all terms you use in the deer hunting world so if you know you know um but i have all these trails mowed coming all back down the edge which just gives us a nice sneak in access point and then just tons of overgrown stuff for bedding this last year was a clover and turnip plot this year i did frost seed in clover i don't know how well it's doing i did not weed kill however so um, that might be causing a little bit of an issue with the clover having to compete with a bunch of grass and stuff. Um, but this whole plot, this whole area in here is all plot. Put a water hole in down there with the tractor about a week ago. This whole area is a food plot. We got a stand set up right here on the back side of this big mulberry tree, and it's beautiful, tons of cover. And as long as we got a wind cutting out towards that field, there's no other bedding or cover out past this line here. So you can sneak down in on this edge that I have mowed, sneak up in here, all the bedding and food and staging areas right out here front. And as they cut through here going out to feed, it's perfect. And so that is probably my favorite part of the property, like favorite location of the property. And it's mostly just because I'm so biased to hunting. I mean, there's Catch and Deers t-shirt. I don't really have this t-shirt on because I love the Catch and Deers brand. Um, it was a Christmas gift. And when I know I'm going to be getting something stained up and ruined, I just prefer to wear somebody else's clothing and not my own. So uh, all that being said, killer location, beautiful. We actually expanded some stuff back here a little bit though. We put in another food plot right here. It kind of does like a big horseshoe shape and bends around and then it connects down low to another food plot that plot here you've got a plot that loops around here so we can have another stand location up there in case the wind isn't as ideal and then if you go down through here we have another food plot planted down in the bottom there because i'm going to have a tree stand up in the hickory tree in the back side over there that we can also access from the other fence row there and have a nice safe wind direction blowing towards that farm with the opportunity that the deer can feed out through here that which gives us another wind direction that we can hunt because if the wind is blowing this direction we can't hunt that stand because it'll blow out both these food plots and it'll blow out that bedding but if we have a wind blowing out that way we can access from that fence row with our wind blowing out towards those farms and we can still hunt this area just like that so there are pros and cons to every different size property, whether it's big or small. The con to this property being so narrow is that, well, there's not a lot of stand locations in different areas you can hunt without busting deer off the property. However, the benefits to that is then you don't have to overthink it. You just make the most of what you've got and you just really hone in your skills on being able to hunt and kill deer in that tight of a location, that tight of a quarters. And it works out great when you know what you're doing. I mean, you can really make the most of it. Well, everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. A little different take on today's. Every once in a while, you got to change things up. You know what I mean? But if you want to get an twin, Nasty Red 2.0, this big, beautiful Delmonica Red Beast right behind me, lmpgear.com. Buy a hat like this, not a shirt like this. Nobody wants that crap. Come on, lmpgear.com. Grab something on the store and get automatically entered to win that truck sitting right behind me plus five thousand dollars in cash thanks so much for watching and for all the love and all the support couldn't do any of this without you guys and i totally and wholeheartedly mean that so thanks so much and i'll catch you in the next video